Well hi guys, here I am with a 2013 V-Strom 650, a DL650. I used to have one of these, I get lots of questions about whether people should buy these or buy the thousand. And so I thought I'd do a quick review, a recap on this bike. Now this is a used one, obviously, 2013. It's got about 61,000 kilometers on it, about 40,000 miles, and it runs like a top. As I said to the mechanic a minute ago, uh, or as he said to me, they go on forever. They're the bike that give us the least amount of trouble. So what's my purpose of this review? One, if you're getting into bikes, would this be a good first bike for you? Two, if you're a tourer, if you're someone who likes touring, would this be a good touring bike? Three, would this be a good ADV bike, off-road ADV bike? And so with those three things in mind, I'm gonna start talking about this bike. So a quick introduction. This is a DL650, a bike that has six gears. It has 65 horsepower, uh, twin uh, Tokiko brakes on the front ABS and on the rear just a smaller disc as you would imagine Nissan on the rear. Now this particular bike comes with uh, pretty well everything is stock including the shield more about that in a minute although they've got some different bark busters on here and these are in fact bark busters aftermarket it also comes with a nice uh, metal this isn't stock but it's got a metal bash plate on the bottom and some crash bars also the tires aren't stock at least the rear one isn't let me take a look at the front yeah, the front is the Stocker, uh, if I remember rightly. Uh, Bridgestone Trail Wing, I think that is. Fairly worn, that one on the front. On the rear, he's got a Shinko. Uh, so you can see this person's been using it for ADVing. The bike weighs about 480 pounds. Uh, I'll convert that into kilograms for you above. Uh, two headlights, right way round forks, about six inches of travel. What else to say about it? There are no real bells or whistles. It just comes with ABS. There's no traction control. There's no rider modes. The saddle is stock. And let's get on her, start her up, see what happens, and go for a ride. With those three things in mind, would this be a good ADV bike? Would it be a good first bike? And would it be a good tourer? First of all, one up and then two up. So it does the usual sweep. You can see this bike is now, what is it, eight years old now. Uh, the needle has slightly pinked up a little bit. It's got the, the lights, a very basic screen, uh, but it's clear and easy to read. Do you need much more to ride a bike? Probably not. And also you can see it's fuel injected. Uh, it gives all sorts of readouts here. So in order to, to adjust the screen, there's a trigger. It feels like it should be a high-low beam trigger. It isn't. It's a trigger on the back here. If I show you, I don't know if you can see that. I'll point my finger to it. There's the high, high beam, low beam. But the trigger, if you push through it, it will change this from the uh, overall odometer, 62,000 kilometers, as you can see. Trip one uh, right there. And then it looks like average speed. And then trip two and right there it looks like uh, average speed again. Oh by the way that little zero people don't really understand what that means that is the brightness of the screen and you can adjust that. If you hold the trigger down it will change from air temperature nice cool one today to the time which is not correct folks. When moving the trigger if you then get to the item that you want to adjust like the brightness you hold the adjust button and if you pump it as you can see it's going up so I'll put it on two there. Once I've done that I should hold it down and so holding it down after you've adjusted it will set it back and then you can go through with the trigger and go round and, and change anything you want to change right there. There is the average economy somewhere. It beats me if I can find it, but I will talk about the economy of this bike having owned one for three years. Uh, I'll talk uh, quite knowledgeably about that. Okay, to start her up, it's simply clutch in. Check your side stands up, of course. Dumper in first, a very easy box. A Little bit of rain for the first time in, uh, oh, 60 days. Quite nice to ride in the rain. I never thought I'd say that. So off we go. That was a second gear start, as you can see. And that's something I'll mention about the engine. The engine, she is 
more of the torquier than the horsepower nature and by that i mean she's got about 65 horsepower but uh she's got a fair a fair dob of torque on tap as well as you'd expect with a v-twin one thing you'll notice about this being a 650 and being a v-twin while it's not turbine smooth it is very very smooth it's quite happy to bumble along as you can see three and a half thousand rpm in fourth gear 67 kilometers an hour 42 miles an hour the handling is super neutral super neutral very predictable okay so it's a very predictable handling i believe it's got a 19 inch front wheel so uh, not quite as snappy as a sport bike but still snappy enough the suspension is what you'd call plush you know as you'll go over bumps it will soak up the bumps very very nicely i'll just slow down for this little doggy here there we go gears are the gearbox is a delight to use absolutely gorgeous snicks in and out without a problem not notchy at all it goes in softly you know you're in but you didn't have to hurt your foot doing it it's his second gear takeoff again guy guys very very easily uh very easy for this v-twin to do that and it rolls through the gears super slickly, as I said. So it's a very easy bike to ride. So from that perspective, it would be a great first bike. Moving it around at about 480 pounds, this is uh, a little bit more top heavy than the 1000, believe it or not. The 1000, the DL 1000 is, uh, oh, 10 pounds more. What's that, four kilograms, three kilograms more? Not much at all, but it carries its weight better than this one. This one's weight tends to be a little bit higher. So it's slow, very slow maneuvers. Uh, while still being good, it's not quite as uh, light to an agile feeling as the thousand is. And that, that is contrary to what you'd believe. But believe you me, I've got a lot of, uh, a lot of experience on both bikes and I'm telling you that the thousand will uh, dodge through traffic actually at slow speeds easier than this will not that this is hard and again that's it's it is definitely going to be a good first bike very easy very flexible very tractable and maneuverable enough for you to get through traffic quite easily this bike has got bark busters on it it looks like it's had a, a good life but a, a firm life it looks like it's been off-road quite a bit and after 60,000 kilometers am i noticing anything on this bike that is uh untoward weird wobbly no not at all this thing's riding just like i remember my 2012 road and that i i think i only put that about more oh, 20 30,000 kilometers on it before i moved on loved the bike but uh, I can't say I notice a huge difference on this one. There is one difference. And so having said this will make a good first bike for you, let's hop to the touring side of things. Will this be a good touring bike? Yes, this would be a great touring bike for one person and their luggage. I've toured two up on this with my wife, full luggage, and it works. You can do it. You'll get wonderful fuel economy. It is comfortable, but in those times where you're going uphill you're behind a line of cars and you uh, you want to you know there's a gap it's it's not the perhaps the most conservative or safest of gaps but there's a gap there and you want to take it 65 horsepower and you know a good dollop of torque you're not going to break any records two up so the thousand would be better for two up touring than this but can you do it with a 650 yes you most certainly can as i have proved done a number of long tours through the states on a 650 it was more than comfortable with it and right now it is super comfortable i am not feeling any vibes at all so on your touring you know it's uh, uh yes it's a v-twin and i know it's a v-twin but is anything obtrusive no nothing's obtrusive here it's uh, smooth and soft i can i can probably skip it into sixth here and it's very velvety here i am i upgraded for a little more comfort and a little more power the suspension is certainly better on the thousand at higher speeds and when you're fully loaded with one person and luggage this suspension is adequate it's uh, adjustable on the back for preload and i believe damping and on the front for preload it's not the most flexible of suspensions and so it's basically you know you're basically dialed in now you can adjust it and it will allow you to to make a, a few changes there but what you see is what you've got and it is a plush suspension it's not firm it's nowhere near as firm as the thousand is and so as you load it down you've got to be wary of how much weight you put on it well we've talked about the suspension what are the brakes like the brakes are adequate 
they're not going to scare you. Now I've been on a few bikes where initially I got on the bike and straight away I could feel that either they were not broken in or they were going to need uh, sintered pads immediately. And the two that come to mind are, despite it being Brembo brakes, I rode with the Katana. I've, uh, and you can go see my test ride on the Katana if you like. Now, the other bike that uh, shocked me, and that really did sh sh uh, shock me actually, it's a wonderful bike, but the Himalayan. The brakes on that, and it was a, it was a, you know, it was, it had, had two or three thousand. It was a demo bike. It had two or three thousand. The brakes had plenty left on them, uh, and they were well bedded in. But uh, they were a little scary clamping those on. So there's no one behind me. I'm doing a steady, uh, you know, roughly about 80 kilometers an hour, 50 miles an hour. What happens if I step on the brakes? Now this does have a ABS. It, bear in mind it's Generation One ABS and it's fairly, you know, crude. It's not got lean sensitive or any of those uh, more modern aspects that the, I believe the present day DL650 has. So what's this like on the brakes at a steady 50 miles an hour? No one behind me, hit the brakes. Good. Not shocking, and I didn't pull as hard as I could. Not shockingly uh, bitey. Uh, initially, it's, it feels as if it's soft, but they come on strong. Now, you saw a lot of fork dive there, and that is one of the issues with this bike, is there is a little bit of fork dive. Now, this one has 62,000 kilometers, 40,000 miles on it. I suspect that maybe the, the uh, fork oil might need changing in there, too, and maybe seals. Who knows? I haven't looked to see if they're leaking. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they're, you grab a handful. This, they're, they're, they're a nice comfortable feeling, rather like the suspension, they're comfortable brakes, but they stop you rapidly. I don't have any concerns about those at all. The ABS didn't kick in, by the way. Let's kick off with that brake test again. And I got some rear. Some rear ABS came on there as I did it, and it stopped smartly. Very good, you know, not bad at all. Enjoyed that. I remember the headlights being okay. Were they spectacular? No, they weren't. The high beam was pretty pretty good. Low beam was just, you know, mind your speed. Low beam, both are on, which is nice, you know, in, in this modern time. This really is designed as a, as a tourer, and uh, low beam, both lights are on, which is really, really nice. And then uh, if we go high beam, as you can see, they both, they both tweak up. They're not LED, but you wouldn't expect that from 2013 Gen 2, uh, but they're, they're adequate. One thing I remember about this is temperature was always steady, just like the 1000. I never saw it go to 4 bars or 2 bars or 5 bars. Whether that's the, an accurate interpretation and representation, I don't know. Oh, it's getting humid now. So, coming back to my my idea about whether this is a good first bike, whether this is a good tourer. Your miles per gallon is phenomenal on this bike. You almost are going to get the mileage of Bergman 650, something like that. It slips through the air so smoothly. Apart from I am starting to get that slight rumble here that I remember, and I can feel it. I can feel the rumble here. But the miles per gallon on this, I remember doing two up with my wife and uh, on imperial gallons that's 4.5 liters not 3.8 for the u.s folks on imperial gallons uh touring through the states on level roads uh no headwind anything like that you're gonna balk when i say i saw at certain times 77 miles per gallon on the display now how accurate that is i don't know but i do know it is a relative sipper of fuel the fuel economy on this is spectacular. So if you are budget-minded, first bike rider, or you want to go touring, you're going to have good range on it. Now I'll put the stats for how big the tank is up here. I can't remember offhand, uh, but it's big enough to get your nice distances. You don't have to worry too much about fueling up. I mean, you're not on a Katana, uh, you know, 100 miles, 160 kilometers. You've got more than that, potentially 250 to 320 kilometers, if I remember rightly, something like that. Lovely gearbox. It's got a nice note to it when you wind it up. I remember that about it. Nippy bike when you when you wind it. Not shockingly fast, but fast enough to put a grid on your face. You know you're gonna you're gonna leave things like uh, 
an Enfield into behind, you're going to keep up with uh, most bikes of your CC. This is one of those bikes you want to roll along, you know what I mean? It's, it's one of those bikes that urges you not to do anything snappy, just to roll on and roll off, roll on slowly up to the lights without using the brakes, roll off, you know, the throttle there and roll on the throttle. There's nothing, there's nothing snatchy about it. It's fairly linear on the acceleration on this bike. Nice pull at the top end, actually. I, I didn't remember that. It does have a little bit of a nice pull. I like that sound. Very nice. But uh, yes, I'm starting to get a little... Uh, it's like almost... Well, it's like being on a naked bike at those speeds, but you are getting... I'm starting to get a little bit of a, a drumming on the helmet. Nothing crazy but a little bit of drumming on the helmet. Yes, I love that. Now this probably shares the same power plant as the SV650, and what a great bike that is. They race those things, and you can feel it. Okay, this has got a lovely band of torque. What a lovely spread of power this is. It, may, it puts a grin on your face because as you wind it up, it really gets a nice rev on, a really nice sound, and it pulls, pulls all the way to a nine, nine and a half, very nicely. I said earlier on that this is a, a linear, but it isn't. It, it has a slight exponential curve above about 6,000 RPM. It's linear below that. This is, you, you sort of, uh, you know, I'm in sixth gear now. And it's quite happy, by the way, at 3,000 RPM. Yeah, five and a half, 6,000 RPM, she starts to take off quite nicely. She's going to be rewarding to ride for your first time rider. You're going to enjoy that. Is it a bike you could live with long term? Absolutely you could live with this long term. If you are uh, someone who solo tours, wants to do a bit of everything, what a great bike for that. You can certainly hold your own in the twisties as long as the, boat, the road isn't too bumpy. So yes, sitting on the seat, legs are comfortable, bent about 70 degrees. My stretch to the bars, these are stock bars, feel great. Okay, I'm six feet, 185 pounds. Bike fits me like a glove. Don't feel like the need to do this. Butt's not hurting from the seat, as I said before. This is a very comfortable seat. I remember I didn't change the stock seat, and I see this rider hasn't done too. A negative about touring is the stock screen. So I think the next order of business is to get to a highway, do some triple digit speeds, and see about this shield. Because I have bad memories of that shield, although never with this helmet. Okay, the Scorpion EXO AT, God knows, 950. I'll put it up here. I've forgotten, but I'll put it up here for you. I've got a beak on it, as you can see. So if anything is going to catch a buffet, this will. Although it already doesn't feel anywhere near as bad as my original helmet, which didn't have a bill. How does that work? Don't know. Yeah, it's not too bad. There's definitely some uh, a little bit of double vision going on now, as the helmet is definitely getting a fair amount of uh, buffet here. 5,000 RPM, six gear digit speed slowing down now because the law says I have to so here we go uh, yes there's definitely a little bit of buffet there for me would it be enough to change the shield uh, yes it was enough to change this shield I went to a Madstad I would probably choose a GV airflow now uh, and uh, try something try something different the Madstad was a crude solution to it so just a great big shield okay it did the job um, but it's a bit like having a sail on the front of the bike. You does catch, it does catch wind. Yeah, we're getting the buffet now. Definitely the slight vibration, slight blurriness of vision, but the mirrors are still crystal clear. Working well. Suspension's coping with everything nicely. It's super comfortable. A little bit of air around your legs, but not much. The wide tank seems to give you a little bit of space there. A little bit of air coming off the mirrors, but it seems to drift past you. You can get longer stalk mirrors if you like. Certainly don't be tempted to move that screen up, but the buffeting will become worse. The shield is lower than I remember it. If you try to raise this shield and get rid of some of that airflow, it will make the buffet worse. Okay, and now on to ADV bikes. Would I take this off-road? Again, uh, I am an enduro bike rider. I've got myself uh, a nice Husaberg. I love the bike. It's wonderful and it weighs uh, a massive 242 pounds. This is double that. Okay. Can I take this off-road? Yes, I can. Bear in mind, you don't have much clearance. 
the suspension doesn't give you much in the way of adjustability and if you want to turn the ABS off it's a simple method but you just have to remove the fuse because it is not switchable ABS on here. Would I take it off-road? Yes, I would. This has obviously, to me, been off-road, judging by the tires and the paraphernalia the person's got on it. There are a few bumps and scrapes, and for a general logging or forest service road, you wouldn't have any problem as long as you were sensible, kept it within the bike's limits, realizing that, you know, 480 pounds is a lot to pick up if you're injured. So you're gonna take, you know, moderate speeds, and if you see potholes or anything like that, you're on cast wheels here. You want to be very careful about whether you're going to be taking potholes quickly or not. So within reason, you could take this bike off-road. It certainly will be able to uh, tolerate it, get you there, get you back. Don't try any single track, don't try any jumps, and don't try anything too technical. You're going to find that you're out of your comfort zone fairly rapidly. But I would say that that's going to be the most, the, the same with most quasi ADV bikes, the Versus, same thing. You know, things like the Tenere 700 and the 890, 790 combo by KTM, those things are going to be uh, better for off-road, for sure. This is going to be, in my opinion, more comfortable for touring than those. It's just more of a compromise towards a road bike. They've changed the bark busters and they've added a, a you know, a bash plate, so they've obviously been going long distances off-road on this thing. Bash plate looks well scuffed, so this has been, had a life of off-road as well as on the road. It's been used there, so you can use this as an ADV bike and you can use it comfortably. It just fits really, really nicely. Yeah, so not bad at all. No foot down there doing eight, nine kilometers an hour. Very easy to to bring around and, uh, you know, very predictable. Low speed maneuverability, a little bit, a little bit if I'm fussy, perhaps a little bit, a little bit top heavy. I'm kind of enjoying this. I often wondered what it would be like to get back on this bike. I, uh, I've, it's not a bike I've ever had seller's remorse over, but it's a bike that just did everything so well. The bike's not intrusive. It's just one of those bikes that uh, doesn't impose itself on you. It allows you to ride and forget what you're on. And they are the best bikes to live with. They're the best bikes. If you want an absolute experience every time you go out on the bike, this may not be the bike for you. But if you want something gets you with smiles per miles, high smiles per miles rating, but gets you there no fuss, no muss, then this is the bike for you. So would this be a good first bike? Yes, yes it would. This would be a great first bike, a first bike for anyone. Would it be a great ADV bike? Yes. It's a good ADV bike, good for forest service roads, surfaces like this. You don't want to go anywhere too technical with it. Look at the ground clearance. You have about five or six inches there. Picking it up could be a little bit challenging. So you want to take your time on it. The looks are subjective. Some people don't like it. I do, I quite, I always quite liked the look of it. It looks kind of uh, smooth and swishy. I don't know how you'd call it. Smooth and swishy. That stock screen is on the lowest setting and I'm guessing the person's done that because I do remember putting this up high and you have to unscrew it to do it. There's no quick adjustment on this and putting this up high and I remember the buffet was terrible. So perhaps that's why um, I'm feeling a little less buffet off this. Um, I could live with this screen with this helmet right now but I remember initially when I bought my 2012 model that was not going to happen. This thing's been to Alaska. Uh, the Yukon is obviously uh, been on some dirt roads. It's seen, it's been around. Uh, it's living proof that a DL650 2012 to what was it uh, this gen, gen 2, 2012 to 2015, 2016, something like that, is a spectacular bike for general purpose use. Two thumbs up for this bike. I really enjoyed mine. Yeah, I'd love to hear any questions or comments you have about it, uh, any tales you have about uh, your uh, experiences with this bike, or any questions you have about it. I'm more than happy to answer. I mean, this is eight years old. This is mainly stock. And this is riding like I remember the new one riding. Okay, folks, I hope you like that. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, click on the bell above, and until next time, this is the Blue Marble Rider, out. Once again, thanks for watching everyone. If this is the first time you've watched, please consider subscribing. I do product reviews, motorcycle reviews, 
off-road and on-road vlogs, as well as tours. Don't forget to follow me on social media, that's Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, and to like, and especially, I'm begging you here folks, subscribe. This is the Blue Mopple Rider, out.